Oh, hey there, app developers. Didn't see you there. So if you've been following along with our series, you've already learned about how to wire up your app to use remote configs that you can create an A-B test, as well as how to add Google Analytics for Firebase into your app so that Firebase can measure the results of that test. So now that we've done all our prep work, why don't we create an A-B test for real? Now, as you recall from our last video, I've got this great little sample app where I have this little panel that slides up and asks our user whether or not they'd like to sign in. And I've set up my app so that I can change a whole bunch of values through remote config. Everything from the content of this text to the color of these labels to the speed of the slide in animation. And so I want to run an experiment to see what's going to be most effective for getting my users to sign in. So uh, let's head on over to the Firebase console and make this happen. Also, I mentioned this in the last video, but I'm going to want to make sure I have a recent version of Remote Config installed so that it knows to tell analytics about the experiments it might be running. And that means running pod update on iOS and updating your Gradle file on Android. And you can refer to the documentation to find out the exact minimum versions if you need them. So from the Firebase console, I'm going to select my project and head on over to the Remote Config panel. Now, keep in mind, our UI is always being updated, and these screens might look a little different than what you're seeing today, but they should be similar enough that you get the general idea. Anyway, you might notice here on the right, there's a new A-B testing button here. So I'm going to click on it, and this panel slides in, and it'll tell me what experiments I currently have running, which ones are still in draft form, and which ones I've completed. Well, right now, I don't have any experiments running anywhere, so I have this nice little Create Experiment button at the bottom. So let's click that and start creating our very first A-B test. OK, so these first few fields there are pretty straightforward. I'm going to call this our Sign-In Panel Test and give it a short but relevant description. There we go. And uh, now for our target users, I'm going to need to select a specific app. Note that I can't run the same experiment on, say, my iOS and Android app at the same time. But if you think about it, that kind of makes sense, right? These platforms have like different use patterns. Your app probably differs between platforms. And what works well on one platform won't necessarily work well on another. So uh, I'm going to select my iOS app here just to run the experiment on uh, iOS devices. And now I'm going to click the And button to refine my audience further. I might want to limit my experiment to only certain users, like those belonging to a certain analytics audience or those who have a particular version of my app installed. Uh, in my specific case, since I'm going to be trying out some text changes, I'm going to limit this to users who have their device language set to English. Like you don't want, say, your French-speaking users to start seeing these English labels that you're running A-B tests with. That would just kind of mess up your results. Now, it just so happens that my app is already using remote config to power every variable that I want to test. But my guess is that there will be times when you're going to be creating brand new values in remote config for the specific purpose of running an A-B test. And in those cases, you'll probably want to limit your audience only to users who have the app version where you've added in these new values. And so you'd be doing that by selecting version here from the drop-down list. Next, I'm being asked what percentage of my potential audience to put into this experiment. Now, uh, if I made this 100%, that would basically put my entire app population into the experiment. But it's usually best to keep these kind of small. If my experiment were to introduce like major bugs or mess up my in-app economy or trigger some major backlash from my community, I'd want to make sure it's only affecting a small portion of my user base. So I'd recommend keeping this value in like the 5 to 10% range, depending on how risky you think your changes are. OK, now we get into the real meat of the experiment, and that's the variance. This is where I decide for each of the variants in my experiment what different remote config values they're going to receive. So uh, to start, I'll click the Add Parameter button. And now it's asking me what parameter I want to change in our experiment. I think the first thing I want to mess with is this call to action label. Maybe this save your data across multiple devices text isn't that compelling. This might not be an important use case to my users, or they might not even understand what it means. Now, the name of this parameter in my remote config setup is sign in request text. So I'm going to copy and paste that directly from the code just to make sure I get it right. Note that if you have used other parameters with remote config in the past, they'll be shown here in a drop down list as suggestions. But you can also go ahead and type in new values that you haven't used before, and that's fine too. So I'll select Create Parameter, and now I have these fields to fill in. So for our control group, I'm going to leave this as no value. Now, this doesn't mean I'm going to be passing an empty string. Like, don't worry that all of a sudden my text is going to be blank. This is just a way of telling remote config, go ahead and use whatever value you'd use as if you weren't in this experiment. And so for us, that's going to be the default value that we've supplied in the code. And I do generally recommend going with this no value setting for your control group. 
Along those lines, I also recommend not mucking with this value much in the normal remote config console while your experiment is going on. Because like if your results are changing in your control group while the experiment is happening, that could definitely mess up your results. As for our first variant, let's change our text to maybe emphasize that by signing in, you can still get access to your data in the event that you lose your device. Maybe I'll say something like, keep your data safe and secure by signing in. Let's type that in. OK. Uh, we also get a chance to name our variant. This is really just for our benefit when we're looking at the results later so we can remember what we changed in each variant. And so I will call this safe and secure. So this right here, this is a basic A-B test. I've got two test groups. The first group is seeing the original call to action text. And my test group is seeing a modified version of that text. And uh, honestly, this would be enough to start an experiment. But I could go a little deeper than this. For starters, I don't need just one variant. If I wanted to test out several different versions of this call to action text at once, I could just by adding new variations, kind of like this. But I could also change more than one variable at once. For example, what if I decide to change both the text and the background to the color of the panel? Well, I could do that by adding a slidey view color parameter and changing that as well. And while this could work, you need to be kind of careful here. If this variant ends up being more successful, well, I still don't really know why, right? Is it the new text or is it the background color? I honestly don't know. And in fact, maybe this change would have worked better if I hadn't have changed that background color. So if you're going to change multiple parameters at once, my recommendation is to do this when the variables are related and you can't really change one without also changing the other. For instance, if I were to change the background color to something dark, well, I'd probably need to change my text color to something that's kind of whitish so that the text is still legible. And in this case, it would definitely make sense to group these two changes together in like a dark color scheme. Alternately, I can just make sure that I have my bases covered by making sure I've got all combinations covered here in my variants. Uh, for example, in this experiment, you can see that I'm changing the button text in this first variation, but then leaving my slidey view color unchanged. Then I'm changing the slidey view color parameter in my second variation while keeping the text unchanged. And then finally, I'm changing both the background color and the text in the third variation. For those of you who aren't hip to your A-B testing lingo, this is known as multivariate testing. And uh, I think this might be a fun experiment to try. So you know what? I'm going to go with this. Once setting our variance is done, our last step is to tell A-B testing what our goal is for this experiment. And you can see here at the top of this drop-down list, it's got a bunch of high-level goals, things like increasing engagement, the amount of time people spend with my app, or in-app purchase revenue. But if I were to scroll down further, I could start to see some of the events that I've been recording in Google Analytics for Firebase. And right here is my custom user signed in event. Since the point of my experiment is to see if I can get more people to sign in, I think I'm going to select that. You can see that A-B testing also by default includes some other metrics to track. It looks like right now it's including engagement, retention, that is how many people come back to our app after several days, and minimizing crashes. And this is all good information to include in my experiment because I want to make sure I don't mess up any of these other metrics when I'm optimizing for my sign-in. I mean, I'm sure I could get like super in your face and aggressive with my sign-in messaging, and that would probably give me a boost in sign-in. But if that change also ends up driving people away from my app, well, that probably wouldn't be considered a successful experiment, right? So it's good to make sure I'm not hurting my app's fundamentals when I initiate a test like this. OK, so I'm going to click the Review button, and I can see a summary of my experiment right here. Everything's looking pretty good, but uh, how do I know for sure? I should probably make sure my text fits the space I have reserved for this label and that this green color isn't too garish. Luckily, A-B testing makes testing these variants easy. What we need to do is grab the instance ID token of our application, that is the unique identifier assigned to an instance of our app running on a particular device, and then we can tell Remote Config to deliver a specific variation to that specific app instance. So then we can try out each variation before we publish our experiment. So getting our instance ID token requires a tiny bit of code. It's basically this one line on iOS and this one line in Android. And so I'm going to jump into my app for a second, and I'm going to stick this line of code into my app delegate and then run it. And now I can grab my instance ID token right here from the console output. It should be a giant string that looks a little something like this. Next, I'll go back to my experiment in the Firebase console and click the Manage Test Devices link here at the bottom. Now, in this dialog, I'm going to take this giant string I copied, and I'm going to paste it into the instance ID token field. And then I can decide which variant I want to push to this device. Maybe I will try out my safe and green variation so I can test both the new text and the new green color at once. So I'll click Add, and then I do also need to make sure I click Save. OK, now I'll run it on my device. And well, depending on how things are set up, it might look exactly the same as before. 
And uh, that's because if you remember from our earlier remote config videos, the remote config library will cache values it downloads from the cloud for about 12 hours by default before it fetches new ones. Now, in a typical production app, this is just fine. But for testing purposes, this can sometimes make things a little more difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have developer mode enabled and my cache expiration time set to zero. And uh, I'm also going to add a giant warning here to remind myself that I shouldn't ship any production app with this code in it, or my app will get throttled by the remote config service. In fact, I will probably git reset all of this as soon as I'm done testing. Anyway, let me give this another try. This time, my app is grabbing new values from the cloud. Remote config is giving it our specific experiment variation. And uh, there we go. Look at that. There's our new background and our new test message. Nice. Oh, how persuasive. I think I do want to sign in. And uh, if I wanted, I could go ahead and test out all my other variations through the same Manage Test Devices dialog. I can just select a different variation from this dropdown right here, hit Save. And uh, just like that, I'm testing my variant with the new message on the old orange background. Look at that. And I'm free to add more devices to that Manage Test Devices dialog so I can make sure things look good on all sorts of other types of devices. Or you know, I can use that to see the different variations side by side all at once. By the way, do keep in mind that this instance ID token can, in theory, change from time to time. Uh, but it generally only happens every few months or if you reinstall your app. But if you suddenly find that none of your test devices are getting the variations you're expecting, uh, just double check that their token hasn't changed. So I've gone ahead and created my experiment. I've added in my variants and determined what remote config values to change for each one of those variants. We've defined our success metric for this experiment. And then I verified that all my variants look good through this Manage Test Devices dialog. I think at this point, I'm ready to run my experiment. Should we go for it? Let's go for it. I should probably note that once we start an experiment, we can't change any of the values for any of the variants. We also can't push out specific variants to specific test devices anymore. So just make sure you've done enough testing with your variants that you're happy with how they look. But you know what? At this point, I'm pretty happy. So I'm going to start my experiment. And once I've done that, I get this page where it shows me my results so far. And as you might expect, I don't have a whole lot of data yet. So at this point, my next step is to sit back and wait. We're going to need some time for this experiment to run, uh, both so that it can reach the right amount of users, and also they have some time to get used to this change. Uh, I'll explain all of that in our next video where we talk about analyzing the results of an experiment. But for now, go ahead and make your own. Even if it's something silly or frivolous, it'll be a nice way to get your feet wet. Then sit back, have a cup of coffee, and I will see you in a week or two.